I've grown this big, gorgeous Space Invader Pectinia colony from a tiny frag that I got in April of 2016. So, of course, now I'm going to cut it into pieces. This coral was doing extremely well, growing fast, and then I started having problems. In January of 2019, the pectinia was beautiful, and then this happened. I had a minor tank crash because of some issues, and I thought I was going to lose it. Up until this point, I never thought of fragging it. I was just hoping to keep growing it and growing it. But when all of this happened, I realized I just might lose it. So now my focus changed to hoping that enough of it would stay alive that I would be able to create a few frags and at least save part of it. Under UV light, I could see that there was very little live tissue. Further tank issues led to further decline and by mid-May, I was sure it was over. Then this. It's actually gonna come back again. I am gonna pull it out and frag it. It's time to seriously look at fragging. It will be fragged. Oh yeah, I still have not found the time to pull this out of the tank and frag it. Oh boy, I have to get in here and frag this thing. I keep saying that. And oh yes, it's uh, yeah, long past time when I gotta frag this thing. No more excuses. It's time to frag the pectinia. Knowing I had fragging coming up, I bought some of these. These are small pieces of Marco rock, essentially rubble, that have flat sides on them, and I thought they'd be perfect to mount pectinia frags. I sorted them into sizes, and I ended up even keeping these little bits of rubble because they do come in handy. You wouldn't believe how often I use them. So these are the ones I set aside in the sump, ultimately, to cure and be ready for when I had time to frag. And then down here is my Space Invader Pectinia, which looked pretty impressive until you realize it used to be one solid colony and what has grown back are 15 separate areas. I need to frag it because a lot of skeleton is exposed and it's got algae growing all over it. It's, it's quite the horror show in there when you look closely. Oh, nice turf algae on the Pectinia. Yeah, still gotta frag that thing. A few more months went by, and one night after Lights Out, I captured this video. I was really glad to see how healthy this thing looked. I also noticed, though, that it was starting to become deformed. Many areas were growing into each other, and the skeleton was changing shape. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to get going on this fragging. plan. I'm going to use the long tweezers to move. Oh yeah, and here's me waving my tweezers around and yattering on about what I'm going to do step by step. Essentially, I'm going to move some stuff around so that I can get my hand in behind the pectinia and lift it up carefully off the bottom. That'll be step one. I'll pull it out and place it into this bowl. I think it's deep enough. And yes, the bowl was in fact not deep enough, so I had to run and find something else. Once again, dollar store to the rescue. I've covered it with tank water, and now I'm going to take it into the other room and prepare to start cutting. So here's everything. My tools are all laid out, and I'm very, very nervous. But let's go. During all those months I spent procrastinating, I did a lot of reading about fragging pectinia. It was hard to find much information, to be honest, but the biggest thing I learned was that infections will set in if the flesh is torn. 
and the recommendation was made to cut skeleton after slicing the flesh in that spot to minimize the risk of tearing. In my case, I didn't need to worry about it. I had all these separate areas. So I made sure as much as possible that I cut only skeleton. In a few cases, the tissue had actually overgrown other areas of tissue and I had to sort of tease them apart really gently. Once or twice, I couldn't avoid uh, cutting and those areas turned out pretty good. As you see there, I am dipping them in iodine just to make sure I minimize any chance of bacterial infection. The next morning. Video tour of pectinia frags. Woo! All right, this one was way down in the bottom and I saved it just because it was green and take a look, it's got an eye. So that's one. We have some lovely looking colony sizes here, two, three, four, and five. This has got a weird shape, but kind of cool. And six, seven, eight, nine. That one back there is a really nice one. Number 10. Also has a couple of eyes. Then back here, we've got 11, 12, and 13. We have seven teeny tiny ones. And then we've got this one. So 21 in total. Not bad for a night's work. Here's another quick tour, but with a filter. Overall, I would have to say the fragging of the pectinia was a success. I ended up trading 18 frags into the local fish store for store credit. Now I have to think about what's next in the Frag Mantle series. Part two, I think, is probably going to be Xenia. And part three will probably be Montipora. So thanks for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. And stay tuned for more. I'm keeping what's left of the skeleton because it's beautiful.